Hey guys, Jim here. Hope you're having a good day. I am sitting here with Luminar once again, and I'm going to talk about split toning today. I love split toning. I've used it for a long time. Uh, ever since I started using Lightroom, which was a few years ago, I started uh, sort of experimenting with uh, split toning and learning more about it, and I got to really love it. It's, it's a great feature, and it's very powerful, and it's a lot of fun. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I've got three photos. I'm going to try to go through these pretty quick. I've done nothing to them as evidenced by the fact that you can see dust spots here. I just grabbed a few uh, few images and I thought I'd walk through them. So they are untouched and uh, that's obvious, right? So I'm not here to correct flaws. I'm here to talk about split toning. So split toning, here we go. So if you're not familiar with split toning, it's kind of easy to figure out or at least generally figure out what it's about by looking at the filter when you open it. So there's a, a section for highlights and there's a section for shadows and that's the primary thing to be aware of and where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, as you can see here under highlights and separately under shadows you can move a slider for hue or saturation uh, or both. You got to use a little bit of saturation or else if it's at zero whatever you do to the hue won't do anything to the photo. You can see I drag it all the way over here it does nothing. As soon as I drag the saturation slider you can see it starts to add color to the photo. And that's really what um, split toning is about. It allows you to adjust the tones, both the hue and the saturation for the highlights separately from the shadows. So it gives you a lot of control over the photo. And so this photo, it's got quite a bit of stuff in the highlights and a decent amount in shadows, so I thought it was a good example. So let me show you what I would do here. Let's say um, you wanna accentuate the colors of this sunrise. This was a sunrise that's the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. I shot it one morning. The color was pretty nice, but it's kind of washed out. And of course, this is a single exposure. So it looked more like that, but the camera didn't capture it in that single frame. So with a, just a slight adjustment to the highlight hue and the saturation, boom, there you go. Now maybe I want to bring up some of that color in the shadows as well, just to show it sort of blending across the entire frame. There you go. Maybe instead I want to darken the shadows in terms of the blue and bring that up to really accentuate the blue that's in the shadows. There you go. Now that I've done that, maybe I want to drag a little bit more in the highlights. Let me show you what this has done to the photo. There's the original unedited JPEG. And here it is after a couple of moments messing around here in split toning. Now there's two other things to be aware of. There's the amount slider. That operates like an opacity slider. So if I drag it down, it reduces the intensity of the split toning effect that you've applied. I usually leave it at 100 because I adjust the intensity based on the saturation level of the highlights or the shadows independently. And then there's the balance section, the last section to be aware of. And as you can see there, it drag, if you drag it towards the shadows, it's going to err more towards giving up more of the color that you've chosen in the shadows area. And conversely, if you go this way, more of the photo is going to sort of display whatever you've chosen in the highlights. I usually leave this about in the middle right there and just, you know, I don't really normally need to do that or that. So I just kind of leave it in the middle and, and, and uh, you know, my major adjustments, I generally kind of don't use the amount slider or the balance slider, but I use a lot of stuff here in the highlights and shadows. The other thing to be aware of is the box here will indicate to you which color uh, you've chosen, right? And so as you move this around, you'll see that the box is changing colors, right? I'll go back to where it kind of looks normal. Um, if you click on the box, it doesn't do anything. Um, I suspect in future versions of Luminar, you'll be able to click on that and it'll open up a color wheel and then you can go select a color. That's how it operates elsewhere. I think it's just a matter of time and Luminar will have that. So that's one photo. Let me show you another one. Uh, this was actually shot the same morning in San Francisco. This is the Ferry Building, which is about a two or three minute walk from where I was standing uh, where I shot that last photo. But it's a beautiful architectural structure. I love it. Every time I go to San Fran, I try to visit here and shoot it just because it's beautiful. This was kind of near the holidays. You can see the, uh, the sort of the ivy set up. Let, uh, let me close layers and histogram. Let me go get split toning again. And, and once again, I've done nothing to this photo. Uh, here, maybe you want to drag the saturation. Maybe you want to bring up a little bit of the orange and yellow tones. Let me do that. You can just kind of mess around. I don't really have a particular plan with this photo. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do something like that. And I'll do something like that. So let me show you the before and after. There's the before. Kind of bluer here and yellower there. And the after, right? I've gone for, I wouldn't call this a vintage look. However, um, 
I'm glad I mentioned that or thought to mention it because uh, with split toning, you actually can create some kind of interesting vintage sort of looks. I don't generally use split toning alone if I'm creating a vintage look, but it's a good way to sort of accentuate or complement other things like the curves tool that I would use um, if I was creating a vintage look. So that's just a quick example there. And then I'm going to show you one more. This is from New Orleans and I've already got split toning here, but I've done nothing to the photo. You can see the before and after is the same. Nothing's been done here. Uh, with this one, maybe I want to bring up sort of the color tones and the highlights. And that's mostly going to pull up this section here, as you can see where the sort of the, the distant fading sunlight is. In fact, I might actually come over here and give it a little bit more pink. Drag that. And then the shadows, let me, if I can get that properly, uh, maybe I want to do a little bit more of the blue in the shadows. You know, something like that. And now that I've done that, maybe I want to go a little bit more intense there. Again, uh, I don't ever use split toning by itself. I always use it uh, as a complement to other things I'm doing in the image, but it's great for accentuating colors or bringing up colors that may be a little bit sort of obscured. And that's what I've done here. So there's the before, there's the after. May not be to your liking. I totally get that. I just want to demonstrate sort of the power of it. You can also use it for sort of um, interesting color tones. You can see as I'm moving through here, and let me drag the saturation higher for both of these just to give you an idea. So, you know, that's kind of an interesting look. It's, it's sort of a, uh, I wouldn't call vintage, but maybe faded sort of a Blade Runner kind of look or something. But you can do a lot of things just by moving these color sliders around. And, and that's what I recommend doing. I'll do the same on the shadows. Look at that. I mean, you can get so many. Now, that's crazy, of course. Um, but, you know, you could combine this with the Curves Tool uh, saturation slider to fade it out and start creating vintage sort of you know, bicolor or toned sort of looks. You know, look at that. That's that's kind of washed out, faded, sort of vintagey looking. And so again, um, this one, the reason that more is happening on the shadow slider than on the highlight slider is if you look at the image, let me turn this off, there's a lot of shadow. And so the shadows dominate this image. And, and that's something to think of when you're using this tool. Because it separates highlights and shadows and you're trying to accentuate, accentuate or change color tones in each the shadows and the highlight section. Keep in mind when you're using it, uh, how much of the image is in shadow and how much is in highlight. And uh, so this is a good example of that. So my effect changes here in the shadows tool are having a bigger impact on the photo than they did on the, uh, on the highlights tool, right? So I'm gonna go over here and just try that. That's actually kind of cool, not completely unrealistic. And this is also where you might start to say, hey, maybe I want to go a little bit more to the highlights or more to the shadows, and maybe I want to mess with the amount slider as well. So it's just something I invite you to experiment with. I love split toning. It's, it's been in, um, used in a number of my presets. I use it on a lot of images. I find that it's really good for sunset type photos to bring up those colors. And uh, again, it's always a compliment to other things that I'm doing. But it's a very powerful tool. It's built uh, straight into Luminar, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So have fun with it. Let me know what you uh, come up with. Feel free to tag me in your photos if you'd like to online. I love to see them. And that's it for today, my friends. I hope you enjoy it. Have fun out there. See you next time. Adios.